walk. Yeah, it was. I got 3,000 steps. Let me check. I only got 2,800. That's weird. That is weird. I wonder how they actually work, me too. Pedometers are wearable devices that monitor a user's number of steps. From this, it can calculate distance traveled over a period of time. Pedometers are most popularly used as an everyday exercise progress monitor and motivator. Counting steps can encourage individuals to compete with others and themselves in getting fit and losing weight. Athletes typically use pedometers to keep track of distances run during training. These devices also serve a purpose in rehabilitation exercise, monitoring for those with diabetes, obesity, hypertension, heart disease, and other diseases where staying active can decrease the risk of worsening symptoms and improve heart function. Pedometers exist in many forms and could be worn on your wrist, on a belt clip, on a shoe, or in your pocket. A typical smartphone is also capable of counting steps and measuring distance as well. You might be familiar with popular pedometers like the Fitbit, Jawbone, and Garmin Watch. Let's take a closer look at how this technology works. Pedometers are programmed to calculate a user's steps based on the acceleration fluctuations throughout the walking cycle. The three components of motion for an individual and their related axes are forward, roll, vertical yaw, and side pitch, and the acceleration is measured along each axis. In simpler terms, with every step you take, your body tilts to one side and you swing a leg forward and plant your foot. Then your body tilts the other way, swings the other leg forward and plants that foot. As you can see in this image, the forward and vertical acceleration varies as you plant and lift your feet and your hips naturally swing. Similarly, wrist pedometers can be used to differentiate between strides as they naturally swing with each step. While the cycle is similar to motion for every user, the duration and accelerations can vary greatly. For example, the step cycle of a runner and an elderly user will be very different. This requires the pedometer to be calibrated to each user as well as using running averages in the step calculations to adapt to changes in speed and stride length. There are two types of pedometers, a spring-levered pedometer and a piezoelectric pedometer. The spring-levered pedometer works like a pendulum. The lever arm swings down with each step and a coiled spring or hairspring returns the lever arm to its original position. Each swing of the lever arm causes a gear wheel to advance one position and move around a dial. A microchip counts the steps that the pendulum detects. The swinging of the lever arm produces that classic clicking noise that you might be familiar with. The piezoelectric pedometer uses piezoelectric material that generates electric charge when it mechanically deforms, providing a measurement of acceleration for each stride. Acceleration exerts force on a small mass attached to a horizontal cantilevered beam, causing deflection of the beam. The piezoelectric material then generates a voltage proportional to acceleration and voltage oscillations are used to record steps. This cycle is converted into an electrical signal put through a smoothing filter and the oscillations can then be counted. If we look particularly at the ADXL335 3-axis accelerometer by analog devices, we can see how the signal is used to provide an accurate reading of steps taken. When you put this pedometer on, the maximum and minimum acceleration values are updated every 50 samples. A digital filter composed of four registers and a summing unit are used to take in the raw voltage data and smooth it. There are algorithms that calculate acceleration changes from the lower limit to the peak for each axis, and the filtered data from the most active axis will be used to count the steps. Depending on how the pedometer is oriented, the three axes of motion will be oriented differently as well. Regardless of this orientation, one axis will always have a relatively large acceleration change in comparison to the others. This is the most active axis and will be used to calculate the acceleration change. To determine whether a full step has been taken, the dynamic threshold level is found. The dynamic threshold level is the sum of maximum and minimum acceleration values for the given axis divided by two. Dynamic precision is also used to decide if an effective step has been taken using a linear shift register. This takes each new data point and compares it to the most recent data point. If the changes in acceleration between these two points is greater than a predefined precision value, that data point becomes the new set acceleration change for each step. This allows filtering of high frequency noise and helps decide the value of a step more precisely. To ensure that movements like crossing your legs or sneezing aren't counted as steps, the algorithm requires four continuous steps and records the rhythm of these steps to set the initial count regulation. A precision analog microcontroller is used to read data from the accelerometer 
Implement the algorithms and send the results to a PC where they can be stored and used by the user. Parameters are advancing all the time and are very useful tools for a large population. Many commercially available parameters today are integrated with GPS technology and synced with smartphone applications. They range in price from roughly $15 to over $200 with increasing technology and accuracy so that there is one for every user level and price budget. While pedometers are useful devices, they are often inaccurate. Some models can have up to 50% error rate. Studies have shown that at slow walking speeds, both types of pedometers are less accurate since it is harder to detect the smaller changes in acceleration. Spring-levered pedometers must be kept perpendicular to the ground in order to maintain accuracy. This makes them more location-dependent than piezoelectric pedometers. This becomes an issue for a waste pedometer on an obese user because the pedometer will be positioned at an angle and provide inaccurate results. Accuracy also decreases any time the step cycle is altered, such as using a wrist sensor while carrying anything that limits the swing of the arm. With more expensive trackers, another limitation is processing time. The algorithm can be altered for increased accuracy and better incidental movement filtration, but comes at the cost of processing time. The running averages can be shortened or extended for increased sensitivity or better smoothing. Overall, a variety of different pedometers exist on the market, so it's important to find the model that works best for your intended use.